Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Inventory, Valuation and Costing Methods Masterclass. In this training, I'm going to show you four different costing methods, including specific identification, weighted average, FIFO and LIFO for your inventory. So after this training, you're going to have a complete understanding of actually how to use these costing in Excel. It's going to be an incredible training. I cannot wait to share it with you. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic masterclass today. We're gonna to show you how you can use these inventory valuation and costing methods inside Excel. And we're gonna put that into a real life application. So you're gonna know how to apply that, why it's important and how to use it in any type of Excel application either method you want to choose so it's gonna be great training i hope you enjoy these training they're bringing them to you free each and every tuesday if you'd like to pick up 200 of these incredible templates i've got an amazing package for you available today for just 77 dollars and that helps keep these for free so if you'd like that it includes a complete single click library single click to open the application or open the video training that's going to be a great application if you get that it's just 77 dollars that's less than 40 cents per template so i hope you grab that also i just ask a few things if you can do just go ahead and click that subscribe button don't forget to click the notification icon bell that's going to ensure that you get notification when i create these trainings each and every tuesday if you'd like to download this application you can do it absolutely Absolutely free using your email or using your Facebook Messenger using the links down below in the description got lots of great things going down there you can check that for different products and different ideas different resources tons in the descriptions all right let's get started with this first thing is why why is this important we always want to go why why do we have four different costing methods and why is this important to us when you have a business and you have inventory there's a few different reasons of why we need to deduct those items from the inventory and what expense do we cost those items out so let me explain what that means basically if you run a business or you're going to be creating applications for your customers that have inventory we need to know what to cost those inventory items out now sometimes it's easy if we always buy a single item let's say a desk for $100 and the price never changes we know our cost is always going to be $100 it's easy but what happens when the cost of that desk changes what happens if we buy it once for $100 and we may buy 10 desks what happens if we buy it a few months later and the price has gone up to 150 how do we then cost that out when we sell it we need to know what to cost it out because we're actually deducting that item from our inventory so for example let's say we have 10 desks we've bought for $100 each we know we've got thousand dollars in inventory if we sell one desk we're gonna deduct $100 from our inventory but what happens if we buy 10 desks for $1,000 we buy another 10 desks for $150 we then have $2,500 in inventory if we sell one of those desks what of the cost that we sell it to is it a hundred is it 150 is it somewhere in between so those are called costing methods now there's four different costing methods that we're going to go over in oil and depending upon the type of business depending upon the type of products that you're going to be selling that's how we use the uh, costing methods and there's four that we're going to go over today i'm going to explain why you would use the four and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating that inside our pos application i'm going to show you how you can use this inside an application and I'm also going to show you how you can alternate between those now you once you have a company you wouldn't want to alternate but the applications that you sell and distribute you can let your end users choose which method whether it's FIFO whether it's LIFO weighted average or specific identification so we're going to be going all through those today so the first thing is why do we want to value it because purchase prices can change over time we may use one of these costing methods to calculate both the remaining or the unsold inventory and the cost of goods sold now the remaining or unsold inventory is called also inventory on hand that is how much uh inventory you have and what is the price of that what is the cost or what is the actual value of that inventory based on your purchase price we need to value that 
When Again, when we sell it, that's called cost of goods sold, or otherwise known as COGS or COGS, right? What do we expense that out? And we're going to go over the four methods. So we have specific identification. That's the first method. And this is basically when items purchased and sold on an item by item basis. So that means you only sell one, you buy one item at a time, a specific item, and you sell one item at a time. And these are usually used for high ticket items. Let's say you're selling cars, right? Every car is maybe slightly different right it has different features different things and you want to you buy it at a certain price and you sell it at a certain price when you sell you sell a single specific car and there's a specific usually an id associated with that car okay so that would be used if you're in the, in the business of selling cars you would probably use specific identification because the price that you paid for that car is the exact price that you're going to sell it so that's relatively simple one of the more simple methods and also it says here often for high ticket items when we want to track specific items unique rfid or qr or some very specific code that identifies only that item are tracked individually the item cost is always tracked on an individual basis so when you buy it, you buy it for an exact cost when you sell it, you're only selling one item right you if you're using specific identification you're selling item by item by item there's no multiple purchases and there's no multiple sold right you can sell you can sell multiple cars but they would be each individual car you wouldn't wouldn't use 10 okay that's one uh often sometimes it's used on the higher ticket items also one of the most common is called weighted average weighted average and that's mostly common so basically if this one is the average cost of all the products you purchase on a per unit basis so we're looking for the average cost right so if you buy 10 desks for 100 and you buy 10 desks for 150 you're going to get an average cost of 125 it is this 125 dollars that you're going to be deducting from the inventory it's also going to be the one that's going to show up on your profit and loss as cost of goods sold so that is the expense that is associated with selling that so that's called the weighted average this is also the most common and useful when inventories have varying costs and are difficult to assign specific costs to them so you would use this method when you've got a lot when the price changes a lot and it's hard to keep track of when you're using a large amount of stock it's also the most common it's relatively easy to track too right so it's easy when we're programming to use the weighted average and basically it's, it's just the value on hand so whatever the value on hand is by the number that you have on hand and that's what you use to determine that we're going to go into detail about that then there's FIFO, F-I-F-O, it's called first in, first out. In this particular one, products first purchased are those that are first sold. They're cost based on items that are purchased first. So for example, if you have, if you're selling, let's say 10 desks, right? And you've purchased 10 desks, it is the purchase price that you used first that's going to be sold so for example let's say on september 1st you purchased uh here we go let's say we use this track let's say on june 1st we purchased 10 desks for 100 dollars each in this go then we have a quantity of 10 right a purchase amount of 100 and a total of 1000 so when we're selling these desks the first 10 that we sell we're going to associate the cost with that the, then let's say on July 21st, we purchased 20 desks for 150. Once we've costed out all those 10 desks, we have sold 10 desks right on the on the FIFO then and our costs are associated $100 each. Then after we sell the 11th desk after that point, then our costs associated with them are going to be $150 each. So again, first in means the first ones we pay for are also the first ones that we sell out so the costing is going to be associated with the first ones we pay for and this is also the most useful when inventory has a short shelf life when you're buying food or groceries or anything like that need to be sold quickly especially like in the food industries so you want to cost your purchase price is the first one to go out okay i want to make sure that's good so once like for example in our example here the 10 desks for 100 each once we sell 10 our cost of that is $100 each. Then on the 11th one, 11 through 20, our cost is 150. And I'll go over this in more detail. Okay. So that's called first in, first out. And the other one, the last one, the fourth one that we're going to go over is called LIFO, last in, first out. And this is basically the opposite of first in. This way, if you purchase, let's say on June 1st, we purchased 10 desks. And on July 1st, we purchased 20 desks for 150. It is this 150 that we're going to use up first. So that means we have 20 desks to sell 
and we're going to cross that out at 150. Then when we do that, then we're going to get to the 10. Now, assuming that your costs are rising, why would you use this method? Well, in this method is going to show a lower profit, right? Because you're costing out that higher item first, right? So when we use this method, we're actually saving in taxes because our prices are rising and we're using that higher cost in the beginning, right? So it is that higher cost. It's going to show a lower profit margin. And I'm going to show you that as well. So let's go ahead and go over this. So this is the least common method of inventory and cost of consultants often used when tax rates are higher, showing less profit on the books when prices are rising. Keep that in mind. Prices have to rise. So notice they went from 100 to 150. In this particular case, we're going to cost out those. So let's say we make a purchase on September. We sold five desks. We've already purchased 10 desks here on June 1st and July 1st. We've purchased 20 more. So the second purchase that we made when we bought those desks, they were 150. Now we're selling them on September 1st. We're selling five desks. What do we cost that out? We're going to cost those five desks out at 150. And then what we're going to do is then we sold 10 desks. So we have 20, a total of 20 desks that we purchased. So we have 20 desks that are available to sell for 200. Of course, we're selling it for $200, but our cost is 150, right? So 10 desks, also 150. Why is this? Because look at this. We have 20 desks. We purchased 20 desks at 150. So in this case, in LIFO, we are going to, again, sell five desks at 150. We're going to sell 10 desks at 150. Only when we've sold more than 20, only when we've sold more than 20, do we then go back to the $100. Once we sell more than 20, we're then going to cost that at $100 each. So, but in, in this one, in FIFO, what we're going to be doing is we're doing this. The first, the opposite, five desks sold, we're going to price it out five desks at 100 because we've bought, bought 10 desks at 100. Then what we're going to be doing, if we've, then the next day, let's say the next month we've sold 10 desks. So we've sold 10 desks. So how do we cost this out? Well, we know we have purchased 10 desks at $100. So we have to cost out a total of 10 desks at $100 each. And then everything after that is 150. So in first out, we're going to, the first five sold are going to be sold at 150. The next five are going to also be sold at 100. And the next five after that are going to be at 150. So we notice that we have five at 150 because we've purchased total of 10 at 100. So we're going to first cost out the five at 100. We're going to do the next five at 100. And after that, the next five after that are going to be at 150. So in this case, this particular breakdown, notice it's 125. The item cost is the average of 125. Why is that? Because we've done five at 100. We've done another five at 150. So notice now we now have 10. Let's format those so we can see what we're going to do. So I show you exactly how we did that. Okay, so now we see we've got that. So now what we have here is we've got 10 desks, not this. These are numerical. So we've got 10 desks that we've sold here. But what we want to do is we want to show what the total is, right? Five at 100, five at 150. So we now we have 10. The total is we've got 12. 50, right? So we've got this is 750, this is 500. So the, between 750, 500, we got 1250. So our, our cost is 1250. Notice we've priced five desks out of 100, five desks out of 150, bringing it to 750. So our total cost is 1250. So we see how that's done. And then if we were to sell more, they would be at the higher cost because we're using the lower cost first then the higher cost, right? In this case, we're using the higher cost first and then the lower cost. So it's the last end. So whatever we paid last, if we purchased on July 21st, that's the last one because notice June is before, July is later. So when we cost these methods out in Excel, what we want to do is we want to sort them based on date. We have to know what was purchased first. And I also have to keep track of how many I sold. So for example, if we're using the more common FIFO one, if I've sold 10 desks, one once I've sold 10 desks, I need to move to the higher price of 150, right? If I sold under 10 desks, we can keep pricing it out of 100, okay? So that's going to be helpful to us when we understand. So how do we translate that into Excel? Well, I'm going to show you that exactly how we do that. So, but first what we want to do is we want to know how, again, we want to know how much to deduct from inventory and we want to know what the cost is because that's going to be. So let me just go over this a little bit one more time. So on, because we're going to be using these numbers throughout the application on June 1st, we purchased 10 desks for $100 each. 
10 at 100 so we've per our purchase amount is total of 1000 on july 21st we've purchased 20 of the same desks at 150 dollars the wood cost went up so now 20 at 150 we've got a total of 3,000 so we've got a total of 4,000 we've got 30 desks available we're selling them each for $200 so we have the potential to make about $2,000 profit right but we it's the profit's going to be the same but how do we want to show that do we show basically if we're using LIFO we're going to show less profit in the beginning and more profit later if we're using FIFO right first and we're going to show that lower cost first and our least cost later so really that's why we're using it now keep in mind that when a company does decide to use one of these specific valuation or costing methods they must stick with this same method throughout so we can't they cannot change it because that's going to create lots of nightmares so they find one that they're going to work for them and they stick with that method throughout the life of the company that's how it should work it should not be changing okay so we have that so the question is when do we cost it and when do we use it and that's what these specific identification weighted average FIFO and LIFO come in now if we'll recognize this we see we've got our point of sale application this is done a few weeks ago if you want to know how to create these and you haven't seen the video I'm going to include the links down below this is a great little point of sale it's going to allow us to do sales and purchases so the reason we have this application is going to let us do a lot so it's really a great application it's going to help us understand inside the admin the only thing I've added to this if you haven't seen that of course I'll include this is a method so in this case I've added FIFO LIFO first in first out LIFO last in last out weighted average and specific identification so once we choose these methods the application will automatically make those costing based on these okay and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that so the first thing what we have here is we have orders let me go ahead and clear out these and I'll clear out some of the order items here so we can see that so the let's go ahead and clear I'll clear all the data out so we can start from the beginning and we'll see just how we did that okay so we'll clear this out and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a brand new purchase I'll just select any customer so what we want to do is before we can sell it we need to purchase those so I'm going to click on purchase and I'm going to click any vendor it's going to work and what do I want to do well I want to match basically what we've created inside our costing methods here so on June 21st I want to buy 10 desks for 100 now I've also added inside our products the top here I've given it a 555 a wooden desk and a purchase price of 100 and a sale price of 200. I didn't put any category subcategory for this so I've created this product already in our products that's going to help us move things along so inside our POS all I need to do is just hit 555 and that's going to add a desk we're on purchasing remember I want to purchase desk so I want to set the purchase date just as we did here inside our costing method so a purchase date of June 1st and then I want to purchase 10 desks for 100 so I'm just going to do that so I'm just going to change this to June 1st and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 10 desks for 100 a total of and we don't need tax I'll turn taxes off for this purposes so in tax name what we'll do in this case we don't want to charge taxes so I'll just turn that off okay so I'll just make the tax zero so we don't charge a tax I'm gonna keep it simple on this one okay so there's no tax that's being applied so we've got a total of 1,000 desks okay so all I need to do is just click next okay and that's going to automatically add that in we've already covered that so inside our orders we see we have order ID 1,000 we've made a purchase of we have a vendor and a user so we also have a total paid which we don't need and inside the order items we've got an order ID the type the row this is the row that's associated row three we've got the P wooden desk right where we purchase quantity at 1000 we don't have any discount we've got a total of seven I've got an order row this is the row that's associated with this order right here so that's going to be placed right here we have inside the order date I've also got a cost that we're going to be associated and a sold quantity and I'm going to a costed right so what I want to do know is has this been costed and I've added a few new categories so what is the cost of this right I want to know remember Remember, is it costed at 100 what's the cost of this because we have to understand what to deduct from inventory and what's going to show up on our profit and loss and I want to also know the sold quantity right for example if we're using LIFO or FIFO and I've costed five of these I know I've got a few more to go right I've got five more to go that's going to cost at this one so I need to keep track of how many have been costed at this amount once they have all been done. so let's go ahead and add one more just as we did in our costing methods so now on July 
first we're going to add 20 desks for 150 so i'm going to do that right now so on july 1st changing the date we're going to add in picking a vendor it doesn't matter and um, let's go ahead and put in this and we'll add the item and now it's going to be 20 desks and we're going to change the price to 150 dollars so totaling three thousand dollars and click next okay now on our studio we have our orders our second order we now have a quantity of 10 desks, so I now have 30 desks in stock. The first one was purchased at 100. The second time we purchased it at 20. So we have a total of 1,000 and 3,000. We're matching our costing methods here, 1,000 and 3,000. So we have everything the same way. And we know this cost. Now I'm gonna explain this in a minute. So what I want to do now is when we use Life on FIFO, I wanna know when we sell those items. When I sell an item, I need to know how many we've used. So let's say we're gonna use uh, FIFO, first in, first out. That means this one right here, we're gonna go first because this one, if we take a look at the sale date, this was on June 1st, this was on July 1st. So I need to sell, when I sell it, I need to use these costs, this cost first, until if we've sold five, I have five more to sell at that cost. If I've sold 10, once I've sold 10 of these, then we're gonna move down to here and I'm gonna cost this one out, right? So then let's say we have five here. So I need to keep running numbers here based on how many we sell until we get to the max, right? Until we've sold all of them. So this one first. Now, what if we do LIFO, right? Last in, first out. Then what I wanna do is I'm gonna sell this one first because this is the last one in. So in this case, right, the first time I sell, I want this to change. Let's say I sell five, I want this to go all the way until we hit 20. So as I sell them, this number is gonna increase. Once this number gets to 20, I know it's been fully costed, right? Because we've, we've purchased 20 and we've sold 20. When it's fully costed, I want this to go to true. Right? So basically when it goes to true, then I know it, then I can filter all the items, I can filter the purchases. So what I wanna do is I want to know as we purchase items and as we sell them, this number is gonna go up. So as soon as we sell all the items, this number is going to go to true. Why is that important? Because I need to know when I sell those items, I need to know all the purchases in which this we haven't sold, we haven't costed all the items. So for example, this is nine. We've only sold nine. That means I've got one more to use at this price when it goes to 10. So how do we do that? We're going to use a formula here. And basically it's simple. This is only for purchases, right? I only want to know when our purchases. So there's going to be two conditions. I want to know if the sold quantity is less than the purchase quantity. So if it is less than this is, and it's a purchase, it's going to be true. So it is this formula that gets brought down every time we make it. Because as we buy items, we will continue. So let me just show you an example and then we'll delete it here. So for example, let's say we're going to be using first in, first out. We know that we must, we're gonna sell this one, the first one, this one, June 1st, we know we need to sell it. So I want this to go to five when we sell five. So for example, if I go to the POS here and I decide we're gonna now selling it, we're now selling the desk and we're just gonna select a customer. Fred's gotta make his appearance here today. We're gonna to sell five desks at 200. So I know that the costing method, because we're on FIFO, first in, first out, that costing method must be 100. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click next. And what that's gonna do inside our order items, it's gonna show that we sold five. Five items at the first, right? So I know five, and what is the cost of it? Is this item here? Now we added this brand new. This is the sale. This is the order ID. This is the row. Okay, this is what we bought. Here's what we sold it for, five at 200, okay? We sold that, okay, at, for 1,000. But what is the cost of that? It's 500. Where did I get this 500 from? The cost of this 500 is simply the sold, we sold five here at $100. Okay, let me delete that. I'm gonna delete this, everything we did here. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete the order and we're gonna change the method. I'm gonna delete this here. So now all we have on record is just the purchases. I'm gonna go into admin and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to LIFO, last in, first out. And what do we want with this? Last in, now we're gonna focus the last in. This was the last one, July 1st. So now if we buy five desks 
and we want this to go to five and we want the brand new number five desks at 150. So now let's do the same transaction, except now we're changing it. Okay, we can select a customer again here. This time we're purchasing five here desks for 1000. Obviously the same thing. And now we're going to click next. So now when we look on the order items, we've costed this one. Notice right last in. This was our last in. So the sold quantity on this becomes five. And our costs, notice our costs are different now. Our costs, because we're using this number, the costing of this last one here on LIFO. So five desks at 150 is 700. So our cost of this sale, our income is 1,000. Our cost is 750. So notice we have a smaller profit margin because we're using the higher cost. So that's last in, first out. So last in, July 1st. The first in, of course, would be true. So we're using that last in cost, the higher the cost, to have the cost here. So notice we've sold five. So I have to sell 15 more. And then when I get beyond this 20, then we're going to use that lower cost method. That's LIFO. LIFO. Okay. All right. So let's see now. And of course, I'm going to show you how to do this. So now I'm going to delete that. I'm going to clear this out. And now what I'm going to do is going to go back indoors. I'm going to clear that purchase. Now we're going to switch to our weighted average weighted average is what is the average of all the purchases so again if we take a look inside our this is a much simpler our order items basically if we've purchased 30 desks and we have a total cost you know a total of four thousand is simply the average of that so all we use is the weighted average so let's take a look at that inside the pos so now we're on weighted average now i'm going to purchase this part again from Fred and this case we're going to use five again same one five the sales is the same now we're going to use next now we're going to go back into the outer items and now we see we've got a total cost five of 666 notice that so we've used the weighted average the weighted average so we can see the desks are 133 so equals right 667 divided by five and we see that our total is 133.33 so uses the average of all of these we've purchased 20 and 150 10 and 100 so the average cost per desk is 133 so notice we're using the different costing methods and of course i'm going to show you how to do that okay great so we've got that and notice it's it's now true all right good good so that's basically what i'm trying to do and the last one that we have is much more simpler actually let's go let's do the last one and then i'm going to show you how to do that so in the last one all i'm going to do is take the actual cost so the last one of course is here is this specific identification now specific identification has a specific product when we set this product up we set a purchase price we set a sales price so we know that that purchase price is going to be very specific to whatever we purchased it for that specific identification so in that case when we sell specific identification here we want that specific one so again customer here we're going to purchase the same desk and this time we're going to purchase five we're going to use that 100 dollars, that very specific cost so now when we go into order order items we see we're using that specific cost five desks at 100 dollars based on the purchase price of that using that specific price and that's how we get our specific cost five desks at 100 each is 500. all right so we've got we've you've just seen exactly how we can use all four methods in the same application but now i want to show you exactly how we do that from behind the scenes so that you can create your own applications okay we'll delete that and basically i've just a few things so let's take a look at so we understand we've got four different ones and we order we also understand this formula how we're going to make it we know the cost and the formula and also what i want to do is i've added these are the three items that i've added to this application so what i want to do basically is when i run a purchase i want to run an advanced filter i want to know that product what product are we going to if we sell a product i want to know all the purchases made for that product and i want to know only those have not been fully costed remember if it's fully costed it's going to be true so when we change this to 10 it's going to go to true i only want to know those purchases that have yet to be fully costed so to do that i want to know anything that's not false basically anything that's true so we need to run an advanced filter based on all the items purchased so all the purchases for a specific item that have not yet been costed so i want to do that once i have those results in here i've got them all here so we're going to run an advanced filter then all i have to do this is only for lifo and fifo right only for those two methods right we're only using costing the other ones is simply either an average price of all the purchases that we made 
or it's also a very specific cost based on that. So for LIFO and FIFO, then what we have that now for LIFO, last in, first out, what I need to do is I need to sort it based, sort those results based on the order date. Because if I'm going to be using LIFO, the last in, I want to know the latest date all the way to the earliest date. However, if I'm using FIFO, then I want to reverse that. So I'm going to also base, once I get those results, I'm going to base it on the purchase date, the date that we purchased it, because it is those, then I'm going to run basically a loop from the first to the last, and I'm going to cost each one out. So it's going to be based on this date. So the only difference between live on FIFO is this date here, the purchase date. Everything else is the same. So I'll show you how to do that relatively simple inside the code. So again, when we run FIFO first in, first out, and we add an order here, we don't need a customer for our, our simple here, and we just do one, let's do five again as we, so then in this case, I just wanna show you the different sorts. So this one, when we go into order items, notice that we've now sorted it based on that date. If I were to change that to, again, LIFO, it would reverse, right? So basically the only difference between these results in FIFO and LIFO is the order date. So then I'm going to do is I'm gonna loop through those. I wanna basically check out the first cost, determine if there's any sold quantity. If there are, then I need to add to that. And, I'll, and I'm gonna, go, let's go over that a little bit inside the code, it'll be easier. So notice we've got five, notice then we've got 500 because we know the cost, we know the cost. If I know the cost is 100 and I know I've sold five, I know how much to put that cost in. Okay, I know it's a lot of information, but we'll take you step by step. So how do we do that? Well, let's get into the code. Now, basically this code, we've gone over this, this most of the code in, of course, a previous video, but I've added a little bit to the, that code. And I, what I want to do is I want to focus on the code that I've added to this application. It's going to help you determine based on those. So we're going to look inside VBA and we're going to focus really much on order macros. There's a module called order macros. That's what we're going to get into. Remember, if you want to see me create this entire application, I'll include the link down below. So you'll have that. You have all of that. So we're going to take off right from where we left off. It's not a multi-part. <laughs> this is an addition that we're adding on. So basically what we do is we have a macro called save and update. This is this macro that's where all we want to do the actions. That's the macro that, that is the same macro that when we click next, it's going to run that macro. So that's the same macro we want to create, add that order here. We want to create order items here. And then I want to basically determine the cost based on either whatever methods we're using. So Inside this macro, we're going to determine last, we're adding all the order information based on the order. So that's going to be right here. I want to add in all the order information. So we're adding that here. Then I want to individually, I want to go through all the items that we've added here. In this case, only one item. I want to go through each one of those items and I want to add that information to a single line here. And I want to cost them out individually. So that's what we do here. So now we're adding the order items. We're going to loop through that. We went through that before. We're going to loop through all the items. We're going to add the items individually. But this time what I want to do is I want to add a few more things. I want to put a item quantity is located in column K. I need to know that. I want to put that in a variable. That's in column K. Here's our item quantity right here. So if I change that to 10, our item quantity is going to be 10. So I want to put that into a variable. And I also want to take that information. And I'm going to bring it inside this most of the information is going to come directly inside here. Going to be, be in order. I want to put the order ID, the type, that's very important, the row, the current row, and the product ID or UPC, the name, the quantity is going to go here, the amount that we're selling it for, the total that we're selling it for, what is the order row, right? What row? That's the row on our POS here. I need to know what row, seven, eight, or nine, wherever it's stored. That's going to have important. Then what I want to do is I want to know the order date. What is the date? Then I want to know the cost. That's going to be calculated. And I want to know the sold quantity is only going to go on the original purchase. So let's walk through that now. So we're adding all that information in the SKU, the product name, just as we did before. And then what I want to do is I want to create, I want to copy that formula. Remember, we went over this formula that's located right here. I want to, that formula is located here. So every, I don't, I don't like to have formulas where there's no data. I only want to put that formula in when we have a new line. So all I need to do is copy this formula and bring it down the line. The formula is stored up here. All I need to do is bring it down where I, whenever I need it. So that's just what we're going to do in this line of code. We're going to copy the formula from N1. We're going to paste special, paste those formulas into N and whatever the row is. And then we're going to just run calculation. Why am I calculating this? Because to speed things up, I may have turned calculation 
off to manually. So when I bring down a formula, I need to I tell Excel to calculate it because I've turned them to manual here. So we want to make sure that it's calculated. So we're going to calculate it. Now what we're going to do is this is the new part. So now we're only, only going to focus on this if we're making a sale. Only for sale, right? We only want to focus on those costs. When we're, make, when we're making a purchase, it doesn't matter. So we want to make sure that B1 is a sale. B1 is located right here. It's going to tell us whether we're making a purchase or a sale right here. If we make a purchase, this is going to change the purchase or sale here. So B1 is going to tell us what type of transaction it is so once we've done that we've determined that it is a sale then we want to do i want to know what method are we using so we want to know the sale quantity what is the sale how many are we saying we're going to put that in f in the item database or i want to get that into there i want to use that f is going to be our quantity once again a cost method i want to know what method we're using and that's in the admin a11 i didn't use a name range on that which costing method located here l11 FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, or specific identification, because based on those four, we need to do several things to determine the actual cost. So back inside our code, we know we've got that. We've now put that in. I also want to know what the product SKU is, and that's going to be an item in the database. Why do I need to know what product SKU is? The product SKU is going to be located in D. We moved it over to D inside the order items here, located right here. I want to pull that, and I want to put that into a variable as a string variable. The reason I want to do that is because I need to know, I need to look up that product and I need to look it up on this list because I might need to know what that purchase order, purchase cost is. I might need to know that. I also need to know the in stock and the value on hand. These are new. So how do we do this? So let's just go over these two formulas, which are new. So basically I want to know how many we have in stock. We went over, this is the exact same formula. If you didn't, it's located right here is formula. Remember, we always want to know what we want on stock. Quantity on hand is 25. So we need to know it's the same formula here and basically it is all of the purchases that we make for a specific item minus all of the sales that we make for a specific item and that's just what we have inside this formula if it's blank we're gonna blank we're gonna sum if all the order items quantity all the items that we've ordered based on only on purchases I want to know all of the purchases we made for a specific item and I want to subtract out all the sales. So basically, we're using the same sum if, except this one's based on sales. The order type is based on sales. And then this one's based on purchase. So all the purchases of a sp specific item minus all of the sales of that item, that is going to get us our in stock on hand. Okay. Then what I want to know is I want to know the value on hand. That's very, very important because if we're going to be using weighted average, we need to know if we have 25 in stock and we know our value on hand, that's going to get us our weighted average, right? Our weighted average, which might be important, is going to be equal to this divided by 25. And that's going to get us our weighted average. Our weighted average cost of that desk is 133. So how do we determine the value on hand? Again, we're going to use sum if. In this case, I want to know what the total order items, order items total, right? So what is that? Let's go into the formulas, name manager, order items, total if you look down here is the total and right? i want to know the total but i want to know the total based on one specific item based on that upc i want to know all of that so let's look at that so that's what we're going to be summing we're going to summing the total what are we going to do we're going to be based on a specific item skew right only that specific item we want to know type i only want to know the purchases i want to know how much we spent on all of it all of the items on all the purchases regardless of price and then i want to divide that by the quantity i want to know i'm going to divide that let's escape out of there i want to know the quantity summing now i'm going to sum all the quantities all the items based on this specific skew i want to know all the purchase quantity right the purchase how many did how many desks did we buy if i know the total amount that we purchased and i know the total quantities that we buy we can determine the value on hand so we can get that so what we do is we're going to get the cost per item the average cost and then i'm going to multiply that by how many we have on hand so determine how much we spent and the quantity we spent it on, that's going to give us our average price. Then I'm going to multiply that by the number that we have in stock. When I get that, I'm going to do, it's going to determine exactly how many. So as we add products, we can bring this formula down. So we know how many we have in stock and we know how many the value of that stock. If I know that, I can determine the weighted average of that product. We will need that only if our it's weighted average. We're going to use that as the cost if that's the weighted average. Okay. 
All right, so we understand those formulas here in the products. So let's go back into the code and back into the order items and go through it. So what I want to do is we've got the product is SKU. And now what I want to do is I want to set that product range. I want to find that product inside products. So we're going to do the set. This is a range, product range, products, product SKU. Inside this product, I want to find where it's located, what row is located on because I'm going to need that information. I need to pull the purchase. I need to determine the value on hand by this information. So I'm going to need to know what row that product's located on. So once we have that, that's going to determine this. If it's found that. So now we've set that to determine what row it's on. So now we're going to use select case. Now we can differentiate. Now we need to start going in to the methods based on the method they have selected. So we're going to use select case for that because we have four different cases. And, and so we can do that with this. If the case is a specific identification, if they've chosen to use specific identification here in the admin, if they've selected this, then what? Then what I want to do is I want to pull this purchase price. That's all I need to do. So I need to find the row. I need to get the purchase price and put that in. So that's what we're going to do in here. So if the specific i need to make sure first of all i need to make sure that the product's been found that means this product SKU has been found inside the product list this is our product SKU list right if we look in here formulas name manager product SKU. i'm looking for that product SKU. this is where we're looking we're looking inside that i want to find that product SKU inside this named range if it's found then we can continue on so that's all we do with that if not found, that we these cancel each other out. That means if it is found, then all we need to do is get a row. That product database row is going to be based on found product, this range, the row of that range. It's then found. So I know and that's found. Now we can work with it. Now we can get the cost and everything. So what is the product cost? The product cost is located whatever's on column E. That is the cost of the product. It's the easiest. Column E is going to give us our product cost. That's what we set it up, that specific cost for that product. And then all I need to do is I want to take that cost and I want to put it directly inside our items. I want to put it right in here. Right here, I want to put that cost right in L and whatever it is. So we're going through the items. I've got this product item database row, this item database row here. L, I want to basically, all I want to do is multiply the quantity that they've purchased, that, that we've sold, times that cost, which is 500 in this case. So that's all we need to do inside L. So L in the item database row equals the product cost, which we've already determined here, times the sale quantity. That's going to calculate the base based on a single cost. Then all we need to do is set the sold quantity in M in the item database row. I want to know how many equals F, how many we've sold. So in the weighted average, it's going to just put it that inside here. We've sold five. So that's it. We don't necessarily need to put it here because it's not based on the sold. So that's all we have to do inside weighted averages, one of, specific identification is one of the easiest. Okay, so that's for specific identification. We know we get the cost and we just multiply the cost to get that. But what if it's the weighted average? In the weighted average, as I mentioned before, we were, we're also going to need the product row, but I need to determine basically what is the value on hand and how many do we have in stock. We're going to get that average in that case. It was 133. So I also need to know the product row. Then all I need to do is get that divide that and then multiply that by how many we have. So let's uh, go ahead and go back into the order item. So then what I'm going to do is just take this number and multiply it times that weighted average and put that right here. So that's just what we're going to do inside here. Again, we're going to make sure that we they found the product in this case, found the row it's on. We're going to determine that row just like we did before. We're going to, this time we're going to set the cost based on what? Based on H in the products row divided by G. H divided by G is that inside our products. H, the value on hand, divided by G, the number in stock. Value on hand divided. That's going to get us our single, our weighted, our average cost of all the products that we have in stock. We can then take that number and multiply it times the quantity that we're ordering. Take that number, multiply it times this quantity right here to get our total. So how would that look like? Let's delete that. Okay, just so we can see the example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the orders. I'm going to delete that last order, making sure that we're on weighted, uh, go back to weighted average this time, weighted average here, go into the POS here. And then what we're going to do is purchase 
10 let's purchase five here as we've been consistent and go next with or without a customer it wouldn't matter so click next and now we see the order items now we see it if if we purchase 10 it would be 1333 so now we see that 133 133.33 times five is going to be 67 our cost is 67 and we've actually sold five okay very very good okay so we've got that we understand that let's let's close that out of here and so now we've taken care of the two so then all we did was set the sold quantity and we set that we saw that calculated based on a single l again equal to the product cost times the sale quantity once we have the product cost determine that we multiply the quantity and we've got that and going to put that in l so that's weighted average so we've gone over specific identification weight average now we're going to do either one now the last one is actually either fifo or lifo so in this case either one of them we only need to make a small differentiation based on the sort otherwise these are the same okay so when we go in here so now we're going to do fifo and lifo so when we go in admin let's do fifo first so now you saw this in action before so when we purchase this uh not so i need to add one more five out of that one okay so now when we purchase five here we're going to chill a little bit different now we want to run an advanced filter based on that as i explained to you before so let's get into that so first of all what we're going to do is to get that advanced filter we need that advanced filter under the order items right i need to run that i need to know all the purchases that were made that have not been fully costed out so whereas this is false so in this case it's going to return true so our advanced filter is going to for each item I want to know all the purchases i want to know the specific upc and make sure they're not costed out. i want to have those results in here so those results are going to come directly in here so that's what we're going to do so the first thing we want to do in r3 is place that skew so that we can run our advanced filter and have our criteria here so r3 is going to equal d in the item row that's going to set our criteria then what i want to do is i'm going to run advanced filter so we need based on so this is getting all based on here order items we're just working with that sheet so order items we're going to run our advanced filter starting in a2 through n in the last item in database row so we're going to go from a2 all the way through n and the last row i'm going to run an advanced filter making sure that our headers are always accurate to the headers here and also making sure that our headers are always the same inside our results i want those results to appear here that's going to be inside our advanced filter so we're going to copy that to a new we're going to use criteria q2 through s3 here it is our q2 through s3 those are our criteria we're going to bring those in and we're going to copy that we're going to have those range come through u2 through ae our here ae you're going to have all that coming here i want those results coming in here remember i only want to know the purchases we're only focused on purchases and i only want to know those have not been costed out so that's going to be false always in that results there okay so once we have it i want to make sure that we actually have results so i'm going to get the last results row and using column u in this case our last row is four so last item database row is going to be here let's go no no results results last results row equals using column u this is going to be the last results row last results row okay if the last results row is less than three then we need to go to no items we can't do anything if we don't have any data but almost always it's going to be there so the first thing i want to do is remember i talked about sorting these right we need to sort them based on the purchase date based on if it's lifo last in first out i want to sort descending if it's fifo first in first out i want to sort ascending so we're going to sort those based on the order date so we have that here so that's all we need to do now so if the cost method is FIFO, right, first and first, then sort oldest to newest, oldest to newest. That's what it's on FIFO. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to we're going to first with sorting, we're focused on sort on this sheet, sort fields clear. We're going to add a key. Remember, we have to set the sheet again. We must set it because we're within the with sort. So we must set the sheet again. AB3, that's the first row. That's what we want to set that sort on, AB3. And we're going to use the range all the way here, U, U, starting in U3 all the way through AE. That's what's going to be our range. But what I want to do is I want to sort this ascending, right? Oldest to newest ascending here. Else it's LIFO, right? 
newest to oldest. If it's newest to oldest, it's going to be descending. So that's the only difference that we need to make for the two costing methods. Everything else is going to be the same, relatively easy, because we've set it up very well. Okay, so now all we need to do is just going to set the range, the, regardless if it's LIFO or FIFO, it's going to be the same range. And we're going to apply that. That's going to sort it based on those. So we basically have two sorts, one you know, based on that order date. Now we're ready to run our loop. So basically now what I want to do is I want to loop through these. I want to determine the sold quantity. Let's say we've sold already five of these. We only have five more to sell at this, and then we have to move down to the next one. If this is empty, right, then we can sell up to 10 of them, right, right at this amount. So that's all we're going to do here. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to start running a loop. So we're going to run a loop through each one. We're going to determine the item purchase database. I know, need to know the original row because I need to make changes. What is that row? Here's the row three and four. This row defers to this row here and this row here. Why is that important? Because I need to set the sold quantity here. Once I start adding, if the customers have purchased 10, I want to know, I want to set this sold quantity here and I want to put it right here. And it's going to be all the way up to 10. So if we purchase another 10, if I make another purchase of another 10, this is going to go to 10 and this is going to go to 5. Let me show you how that's going to work so then we can go through it. It's going to be a little bit easier if I do that. So I'm going to add one more sale here, adding a customer, although it's not required in this particular application. What we're going to do is we're going to add, I'm going to sell 10 of those, okay? And then I'm going to click next. Notice we have the new order here. And now in the order items, now this we sold 10, right? We can't go beyond... We can't, the sold quantity can't go beyond the purchase. So now we've costed out five at 20. Five, right? Five of the 20 we've costed. So we cost five at the 150 and 10 at the 100. So the 10 at the 100, right? Here is our first one's 500 because we, we use this cost. And now what we've done is we've done 10, where we just purchased 10 more. Why is it 1250? Why? Because we've done five at 100 and we've done another five at 150 right so now we can see right so we know that this is 500 and we know that this is 750 and so we know that the total cost here is going to be 1250 right five at 100 is 500 five at 150 750 so our total cost is 1250 that's where we get this 1250 from okay so notice we can sell 15 more now because we've purchased 20 we can sell 15 more at this cost of 150 so that's very very important for you to see so let's continue on the code so the first thing what i want to do is get that database row because it is that database row three or four that i'm going to need to make those changes so we're going to extract that row directly from you and so we're getting that and putting that into a variable right here inside you i also want to know now if the item quantity remember that's the purchase quantity if it's less for example, here, if we've purchased three, then I know this item quantity we have, I have available here in this one, here's 10, right? Here's five. So that means I've got five more available. If 10 minus five is less than the item quantity, the quantity that they've purchased, I know I can cost all of them out at this rate. I know it's kind of complex. So if the item quantity is less than or equal to x what's an x right the total quantity that we've purchased here total quantity that we've purchased on that purchase order minus however many we've already costed out ad is what we've already costed out in this case x is 10 minus 5 we have five more that we can say the quantity ordered is less than the quantity purchased minus the quantity sold quantity ordered we've ordered 10 total we've purchased right in this case purchased here total the previous purchases right and we have there the sold quantity here minus that so we notice that so in case it did, let's say we ordered another three here we know we've have th five more available at this cost so we can this would be then become eight in that case so continuing on so in that case what we want to do is i want to basically take what's an l in the item database row l in the item database row item database row i want to know what that row is i want to cost it out right what are we costing out five at 100 here's that 100 five at 100 is going to be 500 so that's how we get that first one so l equals l in the item database row plus so whatever's here already if there's any cost associated with it i need to add that in there might be cost already there so plus whatever's g in the item purchase 
times the quantity g where does this come from g if we look at it this is the cost amount i need to know the cost right the purchase what is the cost of this particular purchase and we need to multiply that times what however many have been purchased that's going to be going to add that to whatever is here in the cost so we want to increase the cost based on that here and that times the item quantity and so basically if there's any already cost associated if there's any cost already there we're just simply going to add it to it so we're going to take that purchase whatever we purchase it let's go back there Whatever we purchased it, which is G in the item purchase database row, item purchase database row, in this case, it would be G, that 100. We're gonna multiply that times the quantity that the customer purchased. That is gonna get us our cost, set the cost, equal to the purchase amount times the purchase quantity and the exit for so we've already cost this is the reason right we've already exit out we can exit out of that because we've already costed all the items that they purchased but what if the item that they ordered is greater than the purchase quantity what do i mean by that well in this case right notice we ordered 10 right we ordered 10 here but we only at that time we only had five here right so we've got to have to cost five out let's delete let's it was it was like this here and this was zero okay and now let's clean so let's go let's delete that last order and repeat it so so i can walk you through it there we go i'm going to delete the last order so basically what happens if they've again purchased the customers purchase 10 quantity of this is 10 so if they purchase 10 i need to price out five at this and five more at this so this is going to go to 10 this is going to go to five so the order this order here is going to go that let's do that one more time here so this order of 10 is going to be split on two different costs right so that means that inside the order five more are going to go at 500 and five more are going to go at 150 we're splitting it between that so in this case the quantity that they ordered is greater than what is available it's greater the quantity 10 is greater than this so if we subtract 10 minus 5 we get 5 right so they've ordered the quantity order is 10 so it's greater so that means i need to split five here and put more down here so that's what we're doing here so in this case else order quantity is greater than that the purchase quantity minus the sold quantity the purchase quantity minus the sold quantity the order quantity is 10 but what's available is five so in that case we need to do a little bit more so in that case we need to determine the add quantity how many are we adding in this case in this case x 10 minus 5 ad is 5 right so that's going to be basically this is here we determine the purchase quantity how many we've purchased on that purchase the total purchase purchase quantity minus how many costed minus how many have been sold quantity or the costed quantity sold quantity on that at that price level how many were sold at that price that's going to give us our ad quantity what i'm going to do then is go into m in the item purchase database right so i'm going to go back into m here i need to focus on m and i need to increase this number right if it was five before i need to add five more onto it how do i how many do i need to add well i need to add the limit whatever the limit is 10 minus 5 the limit is 5 in this case 10 minus 5 so i need to add that in. i need to increase this up to the limit the limit is 10 because we're over the limit so we do just that here so m is equal to m whatever is n m plus the add quantity that's going to set it to the limit just going to increase that sold quantity now what we want to do is we want to reset the item quantity we've already added five in here right so how many do we have left if i've just added five and i've purchased 10 i've given i got five more i need to add to the next item the next cost of 150 five more so i need to get that five so we do that here the item quantity is equal to the item quantity minus the add quantity basically it's going to get deduct quantity of sold items applied to the purchase right we've already applied five here we have five more we need to apply to a different cost so it is that five i need to extract that five because it's that five that i need to apply to that newer cost that more expensive cost so the item quantity is equal to deduct quantity of sold items to purchase okay so now in l right i want to update the total cost right l is going to be what we need to add whatever is here already we need to increase it by whatever the cost is so l equals l the, the whatever's currently there plus we also need to multiply again multiply g now item purchase again 
located here. What is that cost amount? Is it this or is it this? And multiply that times that. So that's what we need to do. So G times the item quantity. Set the cost. Again, now we're setting the cost. We're just simply adding the cost. I'm increasing the total cost based on whatever the cost is. And then I'm looping through. So now what we do is we have to loop through. So now we're going to continue this loop. Next result. So now next item. So we're going to keep going through this for result. So now we have five left, right? So we've already costed out this item. We've cre increased this out of 10. Now we have five left. I need to go down to this cost and I need to price out five more at this higher cost, right? So that's just what we do in here. Five more at this higher cost. And I need to add that higher cost to this. Notice the first, the first time we added, when this was empty, right? And this was five, we added five at 100, right? Then it became five, right? 500, right? Why is that? Because we added it five more in here at 100. So this became 500. Then what did we do then? But we still weren't finished. We still had five. The customer ordered 10, right? We've only costed out five at this price. So now I need to cost, I need to cost out five more at 150 price. So then this was five. Then we needed another 750. So we increased this five at 150 is going to be 750. It is the 750 that we add to this 500 to get to 1250. That's how we got to 1250, right? We added it back. So inside the code here, notice we're adding it, right? Whatever's there currently, we're adding it. We're adding equal L equals whatever's there currently plus the new rate. The new rate right here, in this case, it was 150 because the item purchase database row because why is that it? Because the item purchase database row went to four as we loop the first one was three and we're looping to four. So now four, row four, our new cost G and the item database row is now 150. So we've increased the cost. So now 150 times five is equal you know, 750. Is that 750 that we added on there? I know it's a little bit complicated because we're doing multiple methods, but Feel free to download this and study it and watch it as many times as you want. You then can take these costs and you can write up your cost of goods sold or your profit margins based on these costs. So you know your, your P&L, you can use these inside your profit and loss. We've done profit and loss before. You can check my YouTube uh, for that. You can use this information to do the profit and loss and based on the current date. So it's very, very good. We've got our dates and we've got our costs. We understand the cost. Now we've got our income. So we know the profit. Our total profit in this case, on this order, it was 1,000 minus so our profit's 500. On this one, our profit's 750. So notice our profits are going down because our costs are increasing, okay? If we were to do life, it would be the opposite. I hope this training has helped you. POS, feel free to download this and work with it. And uh, I'd love to get your feedback on that. If you can comment below, I would certainly appreciate it. And of course, your likes and your shares. Again, I've got this 200 Excel workbooks. I hope you'll pick it up. It's an amazing detail and that it really helps us a lot so many fantastic workers in there love to see the applications you can create thank you so much we'll see you next week for a brand new training thanks again